Act One, Scene One, On a Ship at Sea, A Tempestuous Noise of Thunder and Lightning Heard. Enter a Shipmaster and a Boatswain. Boatswain! Here, Master, what cheer? Good. Speak to the mariners. Fall to it, yardy, or we run ourselves aground. Bestir, bestir. Exit. Enter mariners. Hi, my hearts. Cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. Yar, yar. Take in the topsail. Tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo, and others. Good bosun, have a care. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now, keep below. Where is the master, bosun? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor. Keep your cabins. You do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is, hence. What cares these rowers for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I more love than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence, and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks. You have lived so long, and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour, if it is so hap. Cheerly, good hearts. Out of our way, I say. Exit. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good fate, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable, for our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Exeunt. Re-enter Boson. Down with the topmast. Yar. Lower, lower. Bring her to try with main course. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather or our office. Re-enter Sebastian, Antonio, and Gonzalo. Yet again, what do you hear? Shall we give oar and drown? Have you a mind to sink? A pox on your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, incharitable dog! Work you, then. Hang, cur! Hang, you hoarse and insolent noisemaker! We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art. I'll warrant him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell, and as leaky as an unstanched wench. Lay her a hold, a hold. Set her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off. Enter mariners, wet. All lost. To prayers, to prayers. All lost. What? Must our mouse be cold? The king and prince at prayers. Let's assist them, for our case is as theirs. I'm out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. This wide-chapped rascal. Would thou might like drowning the washing of ten tides. He'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against it and gape at widest to glut him. A confused noise within. Mercy on us. We split, we split. Farewell, my wife and children. Farewell, brother. We split, we split, we split. Let's all sink with the king. Let's take leave of him. Exuant Antonio and Sebastian. Now would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground, long heath, brown furs, anything. The wills above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. Exuant. Scene two. The island. Before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea, mounting to the welkin's cheek, dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel, who had no doubt some noble creature in her, dashed all to pieces— Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed, and the frotting souls within her. Be collected, no more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe, the day! No harm. 
I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prosper, O master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Lend thy hand, and pluck my magic garment from me. So. Lays down his mantle. Lie there, my art. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have, with such provision in mine art, so safely ordered, that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an hair, betid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry, which thou sawest sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, Stay, not yet. The hours now come. The very minute bids thee ope thine ear. Obey and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? Of any thing the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance. "'Tis far off, and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest?' But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and his only heir and princess no worse issued. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? Or blessed wast we did? Both, both, my girl. By foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence, but blessedly halp hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen that I have turned you to, which is from my remembrance. Please you farther. My brother and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom, next thyself, of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state, as at that time through all the signories it was the first, and Prospero, the prime duke, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts without a parallel, those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. Thy false uncle, dost thou attend me? Sir, most heedfully. Being once perfected how to grant suits, how to deny them, whom to advance and whom to trash for overtopping, new created the creatures that were mine, I say, or changed them or else new formed them, having both the key of officer and office set all hearts in the state to what tune pleased his ear, that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on it. Thou attendest not? Oh, good sir, I do. I pray thee, mark me. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which, but by being so retired or prized all popular rate, in my false brother awaked an evil nature. And my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was, which indeed had no limit, 
a confidence sans bound. He being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing, dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. To have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for, he needs will be absolute millen. Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough. Of temporal royalties he thinks me now incapable. Confederates, so dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples to give him annual tribute, do him homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom, yet unbowed. Alas, poor Millen, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Mark his condition and the event. Then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now the condition. This king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises, of homage and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan with all the honours on my brother. Whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness... The ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Oh, alack for pity! I, not remembering how I cried out then, will cry it o'er again. It is a hint that rings mine eyes to it. Hear a little further, and then I'll bring thee to the present business which now's upon us, without the which this story were most impertinent. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Well demanded, wench, my tale provokes that question. Dear, they durst not, so dear the love my people bore me, nor set a mark so bloody on the business, but with colours fairer painted their foul ends. In few they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged nor tackle sail nor mast, the very rats instinctively have quit it, there they hoist us, to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherub, and thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with a fortitude from heaven, when I have decked the sea with drops full salt, under my burthen groaned which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan Gonzalo, out of his charity, who being then appointed master of this design, did give us with rich garments, linens, stuffs, and necessaries, which since have steaded much, so of his gentleness knowing i loved my books he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that i prize above my dukedom would i might but ever see that man now i arise resumes his mantle sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow here in this island we arrived and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princesses can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heavens, thank you for it. And now, I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind, your reason for raising this sea-storm? Know thus far forth. By accident most strange, bountiful fortune, now my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore, 
and by my prescience i find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star whose influence if now i court not but omit my fortunes will ever after droop here cease more questions thou art inclined to sleep tis a good dullness and give it way i know thou canst not choose miranda sleeps come away servant come i am ready now approach my ariel come enter ariel all hail great master grave sir hail i come to answer thy best pleasure be it to fly to swim to dive into the fire to ride on the curled clouds to thy strong bidding task ariel and all his quality hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that i bade thee to every article i boarded the king's ship now on the beak now in the waist the deck in every cabin i flamed amazement some time i'd divide and burn in many places on the topmast the yards and bowsprit would i flame distinctly then meet and join jove's lightnings the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps more momentary and sight outrunning were not the fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring the most mighty neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble yea his dread trident shake my brave spirit who was so firm so constant that this coil would not infect his reason not a soul but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation all but mariners plunged in the foaming brine and quit the vessel then all of fire with me the king's son ferdinand with hair upstaring then like reeds not hair was the first man that leaped cried hell is empty and all the devils are here why that's my spirit but was this not nigh shore close by my master but are they ariel safe not a hair perished on their sustaining garments not a blemish but fresher than before and as thou bad'st me in troops i have dispersed them about the isle the king's son have i landed by himself whom i left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle and sitting his arms in this sad knot of the king's ship the mariners say how thou hast disposed and all the rest of the fleet safely in harbour is the king's ship in the deep nook where once thou called to me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed bermoofs there she's hid the mariners all under hatches stowed who with a charm joined to their suffered labour i have left asleep and for the rest of the fleet which i dispersed they all have met again and are upon the mediterranean float bound sadly home for naples supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish ariel thy charge exactly is performed but there's more work what is the time of the day past the mid-season at least two glasses the time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously is there more toil since thou dost give me pains let me remember thee what thou hast promised which is not yet performed me how now moody what is it thou canst demand my liberty before the time be out no more i prithee remember i have done thee worthy service told thee no lies made thee no mistakings served without or grudge or grumblings thou didst promise to bait me a full year dost thou forget from what a torment i did free thee no thou dost and thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep to run upon the sharp wind of the north to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost i do not sir thou liest malignant thing hast thou forgot the foul witch sycorax who with age and envy was grown into a hoop hast thou forgot her no sir thou hast where was she born speak tell me sir in argier oh was she so i must once in a month recount what thou hast been which thou forgettest this damned witch sycorax for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing from argier thou knowest was banished for one thing she did they would not take her life is not this true ay sir this blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child and here was left by the sailors thou my slave as thou reportest thyself wast then her servant 
and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands refusing her grand hests she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years within which space she died and left thee there where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill-wheels strike then was this island save for the sun that she did litter here a freckled whelp hag-born not honoured with a human shape yes caliban her son dull thing i say so he that caliban whom now i keep in service thou best knowest what torment i did find thee in thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears it was a torment to lay upon the damned which sycorax could not again undo it was mine art when i arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out i thank thee master if thou more murmurest i will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters pardon master i will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently do so and after two days i will discharge thee that's my noble master what shall i do say what what shall i do go make thyself like a nymph of the sea be subject to no sight but thine and mine invisible to every eyeball else go take this shape and hither come in it go hence with diligence exit ariel awake dear heart awake thou hast slept well awake oh the strangeness of your story put heaviness in me shake it off come on we'll visit caliban my slave who never yields us kind answer tis a villain sir i do not love to look on but as tis we cannot miss him he does make our fire fetch in our wood and serves in offices that profit us what ho slave caliban thou earth thou speak caliban within there's wood enough within come forth i say there's other business for thee come thou tortoise when re-enter ariel fine apparition my quaint ariel hearken thine ear my lord it shall be done exit thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam come forth enter caliban as wicked jew as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen drop on you both a south-west blow on ye a bliss of you all o'er for this be sure to-night thou shalt have cramps side stitches that shall pen thy breath up urchins shall for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb each pinch more stinging than bees that made em i must eat my dinner this island's mine by sycorax my mother which thou takest from me when thou camest first thou strokest me and madest much of me wouldst give me waters with berries in't and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night and then i loved thee and showed thee all the qualities at thile the fresh springs brine pits barren place and fertile cursed be that i did so all the charms of sycorax toads beetles bats light on you for i am all the subjects that you have which first was mine own king and here you sty me in this hard rock whilst you do keep me from the rest at thyland thou most lying slave whom stripes may move not kindness i have used thee filth as thou art with human care and lodged thee in mine own cell till thou didst seek to violate the honour of my child oh ho oh ho would it had been done thou didst prevent me i have peopled else this isle with calibans abhorred slave 
which any print of goodness wilt not take, being capable of all ill. I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. Uh, you taught me language. And my profit on is I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Hagseed hence. Fetch us in fuel, and be quick, thou art best, to answer other business. Shruggest thou malice? If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar, that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No oh, pray thee. Aside. I must obey. His art is of such power it will control my dam's god set a boss and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing. Ferdinand following. Ariel's song. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands. Curtsied when you have, and kissed the wild waves whist. Foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burthen bear. Hark, hark! Bow wow, the watchdog's bark. Bow wow. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting Chanticleer cry cock a diddle dow. Where should this music be? In the air or the earth? It sounds no more. And sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. Ariel sings. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea-change into something rich and strange. Sea-nymphs hourly ring his knell. Ding-dong! Hark! Now I hear them. Ding-dong-bell! The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance, And say what thou seest yond. What is't? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about! Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form. But tis a spirit. No, and shit eats and sleeps, And hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and but he's something stained with grief that's beauty's canker thou mightst call him a goodly person he hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them i might call him a thing divine for nothing natural i ever saw so noble aside it goes on i see as my soul prompts it spirit fine spirit i'll free thee within two days for this most sure the goddess on whom these airs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, Oh, you wonder, if you be maid or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language? Heavens! I am the best of them that speak this speech, were I but where tis spoken. How, the best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself am Naples. 
who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack, for mercy! Yes, faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his son being twain. Aside, the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now twere fit to do it. At the first sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. To Ferdinand. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Oh, pity move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. Aside, they are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. To Ferdinand. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell within it. Follow me. Speak not you for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots, and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Draws, and is charmed from moving. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, I say, my foot, my tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity, I'll be his surety. Silence, one word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What, an advocate for an impostor? Hush! Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench, to the most of men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid, all quarters else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. Aside, it works. To Ferdinand. Come on. Aside. Thou hast done well, fine Ariel. To Ferdinand. Follow me. To Ariel. Hark what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. This is unwonted which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. End of Act One